Hello, my beautiful Cancerian friends, and welcome to your horoscope for May of 2020, where this month we have 40% of our planets heading into retrograde energy, which means, Cancer, that this month, which is a very heavy 12th house month for you, it's a very heavy work on that spiritual life, get ready before birthday time kind of month for you, but the retrogrades also add to a bit of a slowdown and reflection, which what's better than some reflection before you move towards your birthday time. This month, you're definitely going to see that. So don't be surprised if you feel the energies, especially mid-month, begin to really kind of slow down as you move into review. Now, this month, we're also going to have a moon at the end of the month that I think is really important for you. It's going to be the new moon happening in the energy of Gemini, so I would love for you to focus in on that. This is going to be lighting up your 12th house space. The sun and the moon will be together, which means anything is possible. So right here in this time, before your birthday comes around, it is the time for you to plant your seeds of intention, to begin something new, to begin a year in your life that is maybe vastly different than anything you've experienced before. One of the things that I think about quite a bit is that in our lives and in our relationships, Cancer, and see if you can relate with me, how many times do we think, okay, this is what's going on in my life, and yes, I'm moving towards this goal over here, but we limit how big that goal can be, or we limit how much we, 12th house, can actually shed in order to really be expansive or what we can add to ourselves to be expansive. So at that new moon in Gemini, one of the things I just keep thinking of and it keeps blaring through for me, which is why I'm starting the video with something that's happening at the end of the month, but is this idea of studying, communicating, um, any of those kinds of things that allow your mental faculties, your intellect, and your communication to be changed or adjusted. In the 12th house, with all of the retrograde energies as well, Cancer, this may be a month genuinely where it is time to let go of the past. It is time to put that crappy relationship down. It is time to celebrate the relationships that are here in your life. And it is time to celebrate another season of life for yourself where you will definitely be changed as we move towards your birthday time. And it is okay to not have that requited love. It's okay to not have that requited love with the job, with the whatever. It is really okay to allow yourself to be free as we get ready to move towards your birthday. So that is something that continues to stick out and glare for me as we travel through the month. So I want to make you aware of that. Now, also because we've got so much happening this month in Gemini energy, Mercury is going to move into the energy of Gemini at the beginning of the month. But on the 17th of the month, just like Venus is out of bounds right now, on the 17th of the month, Mercury is going to move into out of bounds, which means that the way that you communicate, the things that you study, the things from the past, you're looking outside of your normal bounds for solutions and information to these things. So in being free from the past, in doing your spiritual work, in research, whatever you're looking for in this 12th house arena, look outside of your normal circles. Maybe even it's just that your intellectual interests are being drawn to something else. Maybe you've been very much so this type of person and now you're like, oh, I actually do want to learn about this or you find value in something outside of that. So just remember from the 17th of the month on, Mercury, our communication and our information and messenger energy will be out of bounds. So that's your permission to move out of bounds to find and to share your information as well, okay? All right, let's jump in from the beginning of the month and talk about what's happening. Right at the beginning of the month on the 7th, we're going to kick off with a full moon happening in the energy of Scorpio. Now, this is a fellow water energy, right? And this is going to light up your fifth house space. Now, the fifth house is all about children, self-expression, freedom, play, joy, there's romance, there's risk that happens in this house, but it's also a house of conception. So whether you're conceiving a baby, whether you're doing adoption, whether you're conceiving and beginning a new project or something like that, it all comes in this fifth house space. So that's the arena of life that things are working on. The full moon brings the action of saying, okay, in this area, Cancer, something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. We need to make a shift here to this area. Now, what we're looking for in this fifth house area, first of all, I do think because it's in the energy of Scorpio and it's in your fifth house that whether you wanted to, you did it. This is a prime energy for um, 
conception, for getting pregnant, for getting that new business idea off the ground, and maybe you didn't even necessarily plan for it or mean for it. But because Scorpio energy is over the reproductive energy, because you are a family sign, I do think that this is a month where things with children could actually be over, over the next four weeks really highlighted and on your table. But the Scorpio energy is what it's doing is it's tapping into this place to tap into our deepest desires to make us aware of, of the desires that we have, of these things that we may be struggling with in this particular area. So I would ask you, not only around children, but at this full moon in the area of joy in your own expression and being willing to take a risk on something that really expresses who you are, Cancer, what is this moon showing you? Please tell me um, how this manifests for you in the comment section down below. Now, on the 11th, we've got a busy day. First of all, we've got Mercury, our communication energy, moving into the energy of Gemini. So this starts to light up your 12th house space, okay? So Mercury in Gemini, he's in domicile, so he's comfortable. He's rulership, so he's very, very happy to be in this particular energy. He's lighting up your 12th house space, so he feels good here right? Today is the day where you start doing something new. You start getting these new communications. Maybe you're even moving into some chanting or something like that because Gemini and Mercury really like to use that voice. They like to use the information, you know, Omni Padme Om. Maybe this becomes a part of your natural practice here. I think that you find ways even in your 12th house space to communicate better. How are you communicating with specialized populations? How are you communicating with that realm of the spirit? Where are you getting your information if you are a researcher or a detective, things like that, right? Now, because Mercury is moving into the 12th house as well, and I've talked a lot about your shedding for your year, I do think that with Venus going retrograde this month as well, this could bring an old communication back into your life. And if it does come into your life, it's looking for information, right? It's looking for healing. It's looking to see where it's going to go next. So just be open um, to what that's going to bring to your table. Mercury in the 12th house as well does like to do some traveling, but it's short distance traveling. So maybe you're going to do um, Gemini's and energy of the lungs. You're doing a breath work class. You know, maybe you're, you're traveling to a different city or if you're still in quarantine and you're not ready to travel, maybe you are taking um, a class online that's about breath work or about calming the nervous system. Very Gemini kind of qualities. Now, also on the 11th, what's going to happen is that Saturn is going to step into its retrograde. So Saturn is going to begin the retrograde at one degree of Aquarius over here. So in this eighth house, and then it's going to finish that retrograde at 25 degrees of Capricorn. So stepping back into to the seventh house space, okay? Now, what this means is that first of all, Saturn has already been showing you some new beginnings in this eighth house, which is about your independence. It's about your sex. It's about your sexuality. It's about your intimate, vulnerable connections. It's about your healing. It's about your studying the depth of things that are maybe mystic and occult, right? But it is at a very deep level of work, right? So you've started to see that connection with Saturn stepping into Aquarius, but it's just giving you the rumblings of what needs to change. Now, as he continues the retrograde backwards until um, September, what he's going to be going back over and making sure that you have crystallized are the lessons of the seventh house with relationships, conscious chosen one-on-one -on -one relationships and partnerships. How are you showing up? What have you learned in this area? Did you finish that divorce? Did you get married? Are these things brought to a completion where you can say, I can reevaluate this area of my life now and as I move forward, know that I have grown here. I have maturity that has happened here. I have discovered a foundation that I built in this particular area. Now, I also think too that because you've, this will not be new necessarily. It's something that you've already seen. It's already been in your wheelhouse. You were even vaguely aware of it because you're going back over in, in that way. You will get to say, based on the work that I did here or based on what I was shown here, this is a place that I can build a future from. So it's a really delicious time during the Saturn retrograde to get serious and look over some of these areas you've been working on for about two and a half years anyways. You pair that with a lot of 12th house work this month and there is just a shedding and coming to this next level that is available for you as we get towards the October timeframe of 2020, okay? The 13th is also a deliciously busy day. We've got Mars stepping into the energy of Pisces, which is going to light up your ninth house space over here. And we've got Venus stepping into the beginning of her retrograde, and she'll be retrograde all the way until June 25th. So let's talk about that Mars first. So Mars is our planet of action and energy and assertion and movement, and it's also in a fellow um, water sign as well, Pisces. So 
when Mars gets into Pisces, Mars is not just action, but he's also our desire, what I desire and what I move towards, right? So some of the things that happens when Mars is in Pisces is you're not always sure what you want. You're not always really, really willing to like fight for it, or you're not going at it as this like warrior energy. Instead, you're maybe taking a, a more passive route or a route that is not even passive. It's just more gentle in the energy of Pisces. So in the ninth house realm, also having Neptune up here, I would ask you, you know, in the areas of public publishing, marketing, broadcasting, expanding your beliefs, faith, cancer, faith is a very big word for you here. Where are you taking action to step forward? Where are you taking action to learn? Where are you taking action to grant this um, forgiveness, this compassion to be creative in these particular areas? But Mars and Pisces could also see you working with specialized populations. Saturn stepped into Aquarius, right? into a very social, social energy in this eighth house space for you. But what it may have also triggered here in the ninth house space is that maybe you found out that in order to be free from something, you needed to connect more spiritually um, in, a, in a more expanded kind of way. Now, I'm getting a vision here for you, too. I'm not sure who this is for, but for some of you, this has to do with foreign countries or a foreign land like you are maybe you're maybe having to go go back there or you're maybe actually having to do some travel to someplace foreign at this particular time with Mars in Pisces, but it's more of a peacekeeping mission, right? I'm thinking, I always think soldiers going in for peacekeeping, but this could even be that you're going back maybe to your family or you're going back to something with your children and it's about peacekeeping just a little bit here. So for all I know, you could, you could be going, you know, online to visit your family. We've got a lot of online going on right now, okay? Now, as Venus begins this retrograde, she's going to begin her retrograde at 21 degrees of Gemini, and she's going to end it June 5th at 5 degrees of Gemini, so solidly just right here in the 12th house space. So again, Venus retrograde, we're going back over romance and, and relationships in general. We're going over things of value, including money, your self-esteem, and, and are you getting what you need, all right? Like, are you getting and giving affection? Affection is a very big word when it comes to Venus and it has to do with what you value and how you value yourself and how you value others. Venus in Gemini is about information, right? The value of information, the value of communication, the value of thinking, the value of networking, right? These are all very Geminian um, kind of qualities. Now, as Venus is retrograding again through this 12th house, a communication with someone from the past because a retrograde takes us back could be on the agenda because you need to clear that out. You need to clean it out. You need to gather information. You need to do the research, right? Um, Gemini loves details. In the 12th house, we could be looking for hidden details of information. So certainly... This could be taking you back to a project. It could be taking you back to something that you're going to study. But certainly, Venus here in the 12th house as well is I think it's going to ask you, are you taking on too many responsibilities? Are you... Are you taking on too much shame? Are you taking on too much blame? Are you taking on too much so that in your hidden life, your spiritual life, um, in the place that's quiet and we can't see, we can only know about, you know, is there value? Is there value in how you're spending your currency of time there? So you'll definitely get an opportunity to relook over that. On the 14th, we're going to see Gemini stepping in. Gemini. On the 14th, we're going to see Jupiter stepping into his retrograde. Now, Jupiter is going to begin his retrograde at 27 degrees of Capricorn, and he's going to end the retrograde and station direct at 18 degrees of Capricorn, okay? So this is going to be lighting up your seventh house. This is about relationships. Flat out, this is conscious chosen, one-on-one -on -one relationships. How you show up in relationships, the relationships that you have in your life. Jupiter is a planet of wisdom and benefit. So one of the things I think he asks as he goes into this retrograde is where you've been overconfident or over egoic in your relationships because this is ultimately, as Jupiter's retrograding, a place where we're saying, I need help to be better here. I need help to learn these these lessons and to gain the wisdom that I need here, right? I think it's also the place that says, hey, you don't have the skills, you don't have the training yet, let's go back over this so that you can get it and this area can expand as Jupiter comes out of retrograde in September. So I think a brilliant question for you to ask yourself here is what strengths and what weaknesses do you have in the area of relationships and then allow the help, the teachers, Jupiter, the ultimate guru to come into your life so that you can make these shifts and these changes. The fact is, Cancer, we cannot travel with all of the same relationships our entire life in the same 
same way. Sometimes we have to shift, we have to grow, we have to shed, and the right ones stay with us. And the ones that can't serve and that we can't serve anymore need to fall out. So definitely assess the reality of who and what you are and how you show up um, in this area in a way that doesn't present with overconfidence based on what you can actually deliver, okay? On the 20th, we see the sun moving into the energy of Gemini, so the 12th house, and all that you've been working on over there is now, it's got light, heat, life, and vitality. It's absolutely motivated. We're looking to be a little bit more social, so this is maybe where you're gathering the information, you're talking about things, you're going to the online breath class, the breath work class, right? You are you're connecting, maybe even you're learning about relationships because you're doing teletherapy or you're doing something like this, but it's a very social place. You're a water sign, so I'm also getting this vision of maybe you're doing music therapy or you're connecting, you're just connecting to the vibe with music. It's just really good. It's not always about cancer's broken, you know what I mean? That's not the message. The message is there is something social and curious and creative happening as this energy happens. Then on the 22nd, we're gonna welcome in a new moon to this area as well. So at that new moon, which I talked, abundantly about in the beginning of the video is where you're going to plant these seeds of intention to start something right to have a fresh perspective on something if this is the time in the 12th house where you just need some downtime to do you to be you to rest to hydrate to do a cleanse to read that book to whatever it is that you need to do to take care of you before birthday time this new moon is a phenomenal starting point for you to be able to do that okay as we end this month, Mercury is going to make this shift over into the energy of cancer, so right into your sign. Now, this helps you to, com to communicate. You may be talking, you may be communicating, you may be communicating about things that also have to do with emotions, right? Like your emotions are very key in many of the decisions you're making because Mercury is a decision-making energy. When um, Mercury's in your sign, it's also a place where I think you understand your emotion or maybe even a lot of 12th house work, your connection to your emotional connection to things of the past or to things that are hidden um, that that maybe you need to make some different decisions around. This could also be just because it is your sign and it's first house, this could be a wonderful time for you where maybe you're stepping up and you're speaking about something. Um, but overall, I feel like We'll see this a lot more in June, but it's kind of the time where cancer gets vocal. So it will begin right here at the end of the month, and I think we'll we'll talk. I'll talk much more about it in depth in June. But this is certainly a time where we can find you being a lot more vocal about a lot of things in your little world than maybe you you have been in the recent um, weeks. Okay. All right, Cancers, I hope that you guys are doing well. I hope that you will come to the channel, check out the many collaborations that are happening here. We've had Nadia Shaw, we've had Brian Coulter here, um, Sasha Benedetti, Patrick Arundel's coming up, Heather Eland and I just covered medical astrology, Terrence Gardino's coming around, Gemini Brett is up, and so many more. Oh, Elizabeth Grace is on the way, so I hope you will check out these collaborations. I've named them Eat and Greet because we bring a snack and we talk astrology. Now, they're not all going to just be top. I've also got people lined up where we're going to actually teach you practical technique astrology skills so you can apply them to your own working practice. So it's a beautiful time and I hope that you will join us, okay? Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love you so, so, so much and I'm sending you all my heart out there, okay? And I look forward to seeing you next month. Bye, Cancer.